Hi, it's Rob Moore here, and I'm going to share with you a somewhat weird experiment, which I think will teach you a lot about yourself and money and other people and money. And I'll do that in a few minutes. But first, I just want to talk about how I think people have a real problem with receiving money. Now, even people who love money, who have money in their life, whether it's through earning or manifesting or being gifted or hustle or creating value, they still have a ceiling whereby double that money or 10 times that money, that would feel like a lot to them. You know, they may be somewhat fearful or just apprehensive to ask for more. You know, let's say your hourly rate was 100 and you were um, comfortable with that. But imagine asking for 500 or 1000 for the hour of your time. How would you feel about that? Might you sort of laugh and be a bit like, oh, I don't know where this, I don't know where this. Um, a bit like if you ever, um, you know, ask for a phone number of, uh, in a date and finally actually get it and then you act surprised. Um, you know, or you just might not ever ask for that kind of money. You know, you may be fearful of that. You know, why do people who have a £50,000 salary not apply for jobs that are £100,000 or £200,000? Because they don't believe they're worth that. And I'm going to share some tips to help you get over that in the next few minutes on this live money podcast and video. All right, so why is it that so many people are such poor receivers? So I think firstly, it's guilt. You know, if I have a lot of money, other people won't have as much money. If I have a lot of money, I'll feel indebted to others who've given me that money. I'm not worth that money. You know, people have a fundamental lack of self-worth. They fear being judged. Oh, well, if I have a lot of money, people will judge me that I'm greedy, you know, that I've screwed other people over in the process. Some people are just embarrassed, you know, culturally, especially in England, where, you know, most of my followers are, we're, it's cult we're just culturally embarrassed to ask or talk about money. Do you know that 50% of marriages end up in divorce because of money and 50% of spouses don't know the truth of what their other partner earns? Other partner, like they've got two, you know, their partner earns. And that's shocking to me. I, I think a lot of people even go as far as to judge other people who've got money. Oh, look at you. You've got loads of money. You're flaunting it. You're showing off. You're screwing other people. You're greedy. That could have been given to the third world, blah, blah, blah. And, and you know, there's a lot of this internal baggage, which, as you know, I'm on a mission through my money podcast, my money books, uh, to get out of the system and to, to teach people that no one was born to not have enough and not be enough. And, you know, you're not a better or worse person if you're wealthy or if you're poor. You're a better or worse person if you're better or worse. You know, the root of evil is not money or the love of money is not the root of all evil. The root of all evil is evil and the root of all good is good. And the root of all money is my wealth formula, I believe. Wealth equals value plus fair exchange times leverage. So those that attract more money, earn more money, you know, charge higher rates, those that you look up to, your competitors that may be you, part admire but part envious of, they don't deserve more, they haven't been gifted more, you know, they're not born with a gene, gene. you know, there wasn't a doctor when they were old enough that went through their genes, their DNA, or oh, that chromosome, that's the you'll be a billionaire chromosome, you have it, but sorry, he doesn't, it doesn't work like that, it's a learnable skill, wealth equals value plus fair exchange times leverage. So value is what value are you putting out to the world? Are you putting good content, good information? Are you creating great products and services that help solve people's problems, that serve people? You know, do, are you caring for those clients and customers to improve your products and services as you go? Um, you know, do you make a life faster, easier, better and more convenient? All of those things are a value proposition. Do more of that. And that's one third of the equation done. But some people say, hey, put more value out to the world, man. Bit of manifestation. You know, give the love and the love will come back. Well, that's not the reality. Because what will happen is the opportunities for money will come back when you put value out. But if you don't have a fair exchange environment, then you won't uh, it, it sort of you won't monetize all those opportunities coming in. And a fair exchange environment is the equal balance between you charging fair fees for what you're worth so you can sustain profit. We're, but, but on the other side, not being too expensive, such that the value isn't there compared to the price and people perceive that maybe you're a bit greedy or it's a rip off or it just sort of it under delivers. So, you know, they say, don't they over promise under sorry, <laughs> they don't say that they definitely don't say over under promise 
over deliver. So the fair exchange environment is that sweet spot between value that the customer perceives that would make them want to refer others. That's the, that's the sign that they love your product or service. But you can main, maintain at least 20% sustainable net profit margin. Otherwise, it's not a business. It's a hobby. And you might as well just give everything away for free. So that's, um, that's wealth equals value plus fair exchange. And then the L is leverage. You could have a great value proposition. You could have an amazing fair exchange environment. But if you've only got one customer and you've only got one widget that you've sold, then you don't have sustainable, scalable wealth. So you need the leverage of the reach of social media, of customers, of followers, of referrals, of you know, email subscribers, of YouTube subscribers, of Instagram followers, of podcast listeners. The greater reach, uh, exposure, creates impact. So wealth equals value plus fair exchange times leverage. So I've got two exercises for you. Uh, and those exercises, I think, are going to challenge you and are very valuable. So those of you that are still here, congratulations on sticking it out for the next last few minutes. Um, I know some people come and go and come and go. You stood up. So well done. So exercise number one is I want you to note down everything that you've done in your whole life, which could increase your value proposition, your um, self-worth. You know, what have you done? The universities, the degrees, the self-education, the problems you've endured. You may have had ill and overcome it. You know, you may have built a network. You might, you know, have a, a database. You may have a podcast. I don't know. It doesn't matter. But I want you to come up with at least 50 things. Not for me, but for you. Minimum 50 things. Ideally, 100 um, that, that you could say help in some way create some value within you. Because a lot of people who have low self-worth, therefore low net worth, only do because they're not honouring everything they've done in their whole life, which is valuable. You know, the places you've been, the people you've met, the things you've seen, the problems you've endured and then overcome, they all can be packaged into your story and therefore your value. But you just aren't honouring them or you don't remember them or you're only focusing on all the things that you've done that's a mistake. And no wonder your self-worth is low. I say you, plural, not you specifically. If, you know, you know you're not honouring all the great things about you, you're only honouring the lower things about you. Now, you know, of course, if you're younger, you may have less than you have the that are older, but if you're younger, you might have the energy, the enthusiasm, the motivation, the passion, the relentlessness, the drive, the hunger. Uh, and then, of course, if you're older, you've got the experience, the wisdom, the travel, uh, etc. So do it. Uh, and I want you to prove to me that you've done it, because when all is said and done, more is said than done. Uh, and the way I think you can prove to me, if you're up for this challenge, is to simply post your list in the Disruptive Entrepreneur community. So simply find the Disruptive Entrepreneur community uh, on Facebook, join, and then post your results and let's all share. Um, because, yeah, okay, you know, you can sit somewhere nice or be in the gym and listen to my podcast and go, hey, yeah, this is all right, and then do nothing with it. Um, but, you know, like I said, when all is said and done, more is said than done. To know and not to do is not to know. Now, the second exercise, which is a challenge, you'll love doing this and you'll hate doing this if it's, you're anything like uh, when I do it, and that is to start giving random money away. Uh, now, disclaimer here, don't give money away. You can't afford to give away and give everything away and say, hey, Rob made me bust because I gave away everything. I gave a million quid, which was all I had to someone on the street. No. Start giving away five pounds, ten pounds, two dollars, five dollars to random people in random places. Maybe you're going to a drive through, pay for a coffee, leave a tenner and say bye. Um, uh, you know, pay for the coffees for the guy next to me. Go in a supermarket and pay for the person behind you. Um, go to a restaurant, spend three, five, ten quid, give a five, ten, twenty quid tip. Now, I'm challenging you to do this for a few reasons. Number one is how you feel about it. I want you to observe how you feel about it um, because you're probably going to go through quite a lot of emotions and you're probably going to learn a lot about yourself. I get embarrassed doing it. You know, now I've given away, I don't know, six, maybe even up to seven figures away to charities. I give away a lot of things. Uh, I'm not saying it to go, oh, look at me, I give away. But I still to this day feel a bit funny about it. Why do I feel funny about giving things away? I feel really good, but I feel funny. Uh, and something I've started to do is to give gifts away to all the people I interview on the podcast. Because they don't, they don't charge me a fee. I've interviewed some amazing people who've really helped me, you know, and I've created some great friendships. It's great for the community. Uh, and I want to give them gifts. So I bought um, Grant Cardone a Mont Blanc pen and I um, engraved that little saying that he said a few times over in his podcast. I've, I've sent Seth Godin a load of vinyl. And even then I start thinking, oh, are they going to judge me? Are they going to think that Rob's just trying to buy me out? You know, or do they not want to receive gifts or are they not going to like it? or Are they going to sell it on eBay? Why am I thinking all this stuff? I just should enjoy the beauty of giving. 
So I'm, you know, what I'm looking to do is challenge myself because just to give 20 quid to the guy in the drive through and say, keep the change or pay for the person next door is a challenge to me. It makes me feel uncomfortable. And then it makes me go. And it's ridiculous of someone who's, you know, definitely in the last 10 years brought in more than 50 million pounds in business and is quite happy selling, finds it difficult to give a tenner to someone. But that's because I'm, I'm worried about their reaction or how they may judge me. And that's a good lesson for life. And you should do the things that you think are good for the world and good for you and good for your health and good for your well-being and good for your emotions. And you should not worry about, you know, how other people judge that. Um, and also look at their reactions because their reactions are really funny. Now, I don't want to give it away by telling you what their reactions are, but I normally get two or three different types of reactions. And it's always like a change, like they start at X and if you just sit there long enough, bravely enough and smile, because sometimes I just go, there you go and drive off. Um, but you know, if you sit there long enough and smile, you'll see them change. Uh, and that's a great gift. So I hope you've enjoyed this impromptu live and money podcast. Uh, Do those two experiments and actions on money. uh, And remember that you are worth more money. The only thing holding you back from more money and more net worth is your self-worth, is your story, is remembering and honoring all the things that you've done in your life. Uh, You won't attract higher level clients who are higher paying clients if you put lower fees and lower invoices out. So you get what you attract. Uh, And when you put energy out, you get the same energy back in terms of equal law of energy. You know, the law of conservation of energy is energy isn't destroyed or created, it's merely exchanged. But when you put X volume of energy out, you can't choose what type of energy you get back. You could put out a load of good in the world and you could get some hate back. That usually happens to successful people. Um, So start putting the volume of energy out in terms of these are the clients I want to attract. This is my um, fee. If you don't like the fee, that's okay. You can go to someone else who charges a lower fee. But if you know anyone who wants this kind of service, position your product and service and your fees in the right place. You know, are you Kia or are you Ferrari Lamborghini? Both have a place in the market. Be clear on your positioning. Um, You know, are you high volume, low value? Are you low volume, high value? And then stand behind that with confidence and volition and own it and have faith that what you put out, you'll get back. Thanks for tuning in. And remember, if you don't risk anything, you risk everything.